Hello everyone and welcome to another tier list video and today we are ranking Ayrton Senna's cars from 1984 to 1994. Now I'm going to let you into a bit of a secret, Ayrton Senna is my favourite ever driver in Formula 1 and it's strange for a driver that I never got to see live become my favourite. It's just the way it's been since I've grown up, I've always watched videos of Senna yeah, it's someone that I've always looked up to in terms of a motor race, uh, motor sports uh, hero. And yeah, it's quite a uh, sentimental thing for me because I, I love every car that he's drove. And yeah, this is my opinion of what I think are his best and worst cars throughout his career in Formula 1. And we're going to start off with a 1984 Tolman. And I think it is a car that... It was it was not good. It's certainly nowhere near his worst in terms of where it should be. It was expected to be bad for how low down they were. But of course we had that famous race in Monaco. 84, Senna announces himself to the world. And yeah, gets that fantastic podium in the torrential conditions around the streets of Monte Carlo. It just showed his talent that he had. And how he could, you know, make something completely... Uh, not not worthy of being up the front challenge in the wet so yeah that goes in the not good category and then we have the first year of the lotuses so this is the 97 t the 1985 car and it is it's, it's an okay car i think that the year after in 86 was it was a better car i think that this car you know it let him perform to a better level of course and of course, he also got his first race win in 1985 as well. So it proves that when you give him something that was significantly better than the Tolman, he could perform in that. And yeah, I think that Senna's years at Lotus were underrated as he, you know, kind of got some notoriety from... McLaren and they were already looking to Senna Williams of course he gave him his first test in Formula 1 it just began to make his stock value go through the roof let's say that in 86 I'm going to put in a okay car um, two race wins again and I think that his time with Lotus you know it, it gradually got better he, he always managed two wins each season that he drove for Lotus but I think that the car that we see next, the 87 car, is a good car. And I also think, personally, when you put this helmet and car combination together, it is one of the best looking combinations. It's so satisfying to see the yellow helmet of Senna and then the yellow Lotus with the Camel sponsorship. It's so good to look at. So yeah, that goes in there for me. Then we have 1988. Now, the MP44 needs no introduction it is one of the best cars in Formula 1 history you know winning 15 out of 16 races Senna took his first world title that year the car was so dominant it deserves to go in the best category and then we go into the 1989 car now again it was another dominant car it probably goes in the best and it's controversial this year of course but the car with him and Alan Prost in it was, again, magic. So it'll go in there. 1990. Now, it was a good car. I wouldn't say it was the best McLaren because Ferrari in 1990 were on par with, with McLaren. Of course, Prost moved across there. And I don't think it was the best McLaren of that era, but it certainly was a fast car. And, of course, it was a car that he won his second world title in also in controversial fashion but yeah a great car nonetheless 1991 i think it's one of senna's best years in formula one if not his best year it goes in the best category i love the the teammates of berger and senna in this era i think the car that he had is a strong challenge from williams in 91 but mclaren outlasted that and senna's skill outlasted that as well then we get to 92 it could go in the worst category. Um, I'm going to put it in the worst category. It might cause a bit of a stir. But 
a car that he simply didn't get on with. You know, the Honda engine was lacking so much compared to the Williams. It was so dominant in 1992. The active suspension wasn't great on this McLaren at all. And it was the end of the Honda relationship, which kind of ended on a bad note for McLaren. So yeah, I think that it was a good car. Of course, he won that famous race around Monaco. But his championship finishing position was not great in 92. And yeah, that, that's my opinion on that. 93 and I see this is difficult for me the car was okay in terms of where it was it was an improvement on the 92 car of course but Senna's if this was on pure driving ability for each season it would be number one in the top list but it's going in the okay category for me because I like the 93 car for what he did in it you know the famous wins around Donington Monaco you've got the Adelaide race as well and Suzuka Senna proved his driving ability could really outshine the car it was not a great car you know, Andretti proved that Mika Hakkinen came along when the car was improving and gave Senna a good run you know I qualified him in his first race and it was an okay McLaren. It was nowhere near as good as the Williams in 1993. And I think the Benetton was slightly better than this McLaren. But Senna's ability to drive was something else. Let me get to 94. Now this is a real difficult one for me. Um, you know, He took three pole positions in his first three races with, with Williams. But obviously we know what happened. He never actually finished a race for Williams. And when you look at the 94 season overall, the battle between Benetton and Williams, you know, Williams I do think had the better car at the end of that season. But at the start of the season, the car was not good. It was difficult to drive, it was hard to drive, and yeah, it's the car that he unfortunately lost his life in. It's a real difficult one, you know, to place, but that's my list guys I, I hope you've enjoyed it uh what what would your list be i'll link it in the description below and yeah make sure to subscribe and like this video uh so it can push us up the algorithm and don't forget to subscribe to christ f1 for more content